Ready when you are. Live and on your side, you're watching WBRC Fox 6 News at noon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Candace White and right now, breaking news out of Waller County, Texas near Houston. Emergency crews are on the scene of a plane crash there. The plane you can see is on fire and smashed to pieces, but all 21 people on board are alive. It's miraculous. Only one person is reported injured in all of this destruction. Now, right now, officials are still working to find out what caused that plane to crash. And new at noon, an Alabama Department of Transportation worker killed while on the job in Birmingham. Just before 10 yesterday morning, 57 year old Joseph John Bonner was working from an elevated position in a bucket truck when he fell, according to the coroner. This happened on Daniel Payne Drive near 23rd Lane North in Birmingham. We're told when Bonner fell from the cherry picker, he died within a half hour. Birmingham police are investigating. Also new at noon, three people now charged in connection with the midfield robbery that ended in one man's death. The suspects are 19 year old Romeo Bankhead, 31 year old Dominic Bellard and 33 year old Bernard Lewis. Investigators say the men were involved in a robbery and shooting death of Christopher Jones on October 10th. Midfield police and the Jefferson County SWAT team arrested the suspects three days later. They're all now charged with capital murder and are being held without bond. In West Alabama, a grandmother in Tuscaloosa County accused of killing her six month old grandchild. Charlotte Simpson says she found the baby in bed, not breathing last Friday. She was keeping the child at the time. Yesterday, the medical examiner said the baby died from injuries suffered during abuse. The baby's death is being ruled a homicide. Simpson charged with manslaughter now. Three people are also in jail for the shooting death of a 13 year old in Tuscaloosa. Now you're looking at video of 19 year old Jaden Jenkins being escorted by police officers into headquarters. He was arrested yesterday. Jenkins, along with 23 year old Julian Gordon Jr. An 18 year old James Reed are all charged in connection with the death of 13 year old Kaylin Allens. Gordon was arrested Monday. Reed was booked late Sunday night. Allen was playing in his room on his iPad when a bullet came through his window, hit him in the head and killed him. WBRC spoke with Georgia Black Allen's grandmother, who says she has no hate for the people who took her grandson's life. For me to be able to see that baby again and to hug him again, I'm going to have to keep hatred out of my heart for anybody and keep loving my child the way I did. All three of the suspects are being held without bond. There are new reports today that the FDA is preparing for a big announcement on vaccine boosters this week. The feds are poised to expand access to COVID vaccine boosters. FDA senior officials reportedly planning to say this week that the booster shots can be mixed and matched, allowing people to get shots that are different from their initial doses. And while the agency recommends sticking to the same brand, if possible, demand for boosters is expected to surge after the announcement. Washington State football coach Nick Rolovich has been fired for reportedly refusing to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Coach Rolovich sought but appears to have ultimately been denied a religious exemption from the mandates, which required employees to be vaccinated against COVID-19 by October 18th. A number of Washington State assistant coaches have also been terminated, but their names haven't yet been released. His vaccination status first took public stage in July when he announced he wouldn't participate in the Pac-12's football media days in person since the league required in-person participants to be vaccinated. Defensive coordinator Jake Dickert will be elevated to acting coach starting with Saturday's home game. I'm really eager to have Coach Dickert uh, standing in and, and serving as our acting coach. Uh, what a tough assignment for him and the rest of our coaches working with our student athletes during this time of change. But I have confidence that, that Jake will do the job, have us ready to play BYU and do a great job managing and leading our football program over the remainder of this season. 
Now he's now just the first major college coach to lose his job over his vaccination status. Rolovich was the highest paid state employee with more than $3 million a year. In California, a sea of parents protest the plan changes to vaccine requirements in schools. Governor Gavin Newsom says the COVID vaccine will be added to the list of immunization requirements for students. Governor Newsom says that will happen once the FDA approves fully a vaccine for the ages of 5 to 11. Many parents in California also kept their children home from school Monday as a form of protest. A federal judge rules the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill can continue to consider race in undergraduate admissions. A group called Students for Fair Admissions sued the school in 2014. Now they claimed the school intentionally discriminated against applicants who were white and Asian American during the undergraduate admission process. The judge ruled Monday UNC engages in highly individualized holistic admissions program. Let's get our first check of the weather right now with Jill Gilardi. Breaking news right now. One person injured in a fire moments ago in Birmingham. It's in the 1600 block of Pleasant Road Road. Birmingham Fire Captain Brian Harrell is working to get us some more information and we're going to keep you posted as that information comes in. New at noon plans to let most Americans buy hearing aids without a prescription. Today's announcement is intended to make the devices more accessible to millions with hearing problems. The FDA said the proposal would let people with mild to moderate hearing loss buy those hearing aids at pharmacies and other stores. Well, it's homecoming week for the UAB Blazers, and that means a flurry of activities in Birmingham. The Dragon Drive is underway now. You can participate by donating non-perishable food, school supplies, toiletries, or gently used t-shirts that benefit the Blazer Kitchen and a local shelter. You can drop those donations off at the Student Hill Center today and tomorrow. Right now, judging is wrapping up for the building decoration competition. And then the Blazer Showdown will be happening tonight at 7. You can watch all the dances and skits on the campus green. The other big events include the homecoming parade. Now that's scheduled for Friday at noon. And then there's the actual game Saturday with kickoff set for 2.30. There are still some tickets available. And the Blazers will be honoring Children's Harbor at the game. The nonprofit provides counseling, comfort, and support to families with children in the hospital. Players will trade their uniforms for jerseys with the names of the patients from Children's Harbor on the back, giving each child a moment in the spotlight as they take on Rice at Protective Stadium. Coming up, families in Hoover have a new resource when it comes to teenagers' risky behaviors. Details on the new program in a moment. And overpopulation, how Colombian leaders are controlling the dangerous amount of hippos that once belonged to Pablo Escobar. This is a crazy story. And your grocery bill is growing. How much you'll be paying for meat the next time you head to the grocery store. You're watching WBRC Fox 6 News on your side.